what was mm -hmm. I saying? Mm -hmm. So it's clean here. I don't think you need to go there. And I think point here. Okay. So yeah, no, I know. Yeah. So hello, hello. What have you said? Hello. Hello. Sorry. I don't know. Uh, what time is it? Not yet. Hello, hello guys. Uh, welcome to the to this session, the last session today. Uh, my name is uh, Adrian Moreno, and with me I have uh, Magdi Salem. Uh, we both are uh, software engineers. We both work for uh, Dell EMC. So, who here has experience with uh, Cloud Foundry? And, uh, but who ha and who has experience deploying uh, Cloud Foundry on top of OpenStack? Okay. So today we are going to talk about uh, how OpenStack integrates with, uh, with Cloud Foundry. Uh, so let me just go through the agenda. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to just uh, provide the base for the, for the talk. So just uh, talk a little bit about uh, OpenStack. What's it good for? Uh, then we are gonna, uh, gonna uh, introduce Cloud Foundry, uh, and then uh, we are gonna talk about uh, how Cloud Foundry integrates with uh, with OpenStack. So these are the, th the main points, and then I'm gonna hand it over to Magdi, which is gonna uh, give us some cool de demos of uh, how that works, and uh, he's also gonna give us uh, some real-world challenges that, that, that we have faced at the customer sites, and after that, we are going to open up for, for uh, questions and answers. So before I forget, uh, at the end of the presentation, we are going to make a raffle. So just make sure you don't rush out when, when we finish, because you may want to wanna win an awesome prize. Okay. So let's uh, get it started. So nowadays, uh, I mean, enterprises are looking for, that are looking for for a private cloud, uh, there are there are some uh, offerings out there, some solutions. But if you look at the numbers, if you look at uh, the adoption rate, you look at the at the ma maturity level, and you look at the, the contributions, there is uh, one clear winner, which is uh, OpenStack. But you guys know that uh, if you take the OpenStack, the, the open source OpenStack, that's a little bit difficult if you want if you want to deploy that on your on your own. And that's why so many vendors out there have, uh, have released their distribution of OpenStack. And other vendors like, uh, like Dell EMC offer their, their turnkey solution. Uh, actually, if you want to check ours, you can just stop by the booth uh, tomorrow, because it's too late today. You can stop by to, uh, tomorrow and take a look at that uh, and have a first impression of, uh, of our solution. So uh, OpenStack uh, is very good at the infrastructure layer. So you can, you can create spin-up VMs, create volumes, uh, networks, subnets, snapshots, and so on, routers and everything. Uh, you, can, you can even use uh, heat to automate that and to create your infrastructure and automate it. And you can go one step further, and you can have uh, Murano, the, the application catalog, uh, in order to deploy apps and services uh, on top of uh, your OpenStack uh, instance. Okay? So that is great. Uh, but there is a problem. Uh, I am a developer. Uh, who else is a developer here? All right. So we as a developers, uh, what we want is just take care of our code, uh, just uh, make, it, make it look cool, make, it, uh, make a great app, and uh, push it somewhere, and, uh, and uh, don't worry about what's, what's beneath the, the, our, our application. We don't, we don't want to, to, to care about, uh, about what's the infrastructure that our application is running on top of, right? So, uh, and apart from that, we also wanna, we wanna follow a, a DevOps uh, methodology. We wanna integrate it with a CI/CD pi pipeline, and, uh, and and as I said, uh, only worry about our code and not about, not about the, the infrastructure. So, can OpenStack help us uh, right now uh, as it is? So. As I said, it's very good at the infrastructure layer, but what about the, for developers? So the answer is yes, but uh, we can use Cloud Foundry to, to do that. Uh, so Cloud Foundry is a, is a platform uh, for, for developers to, to push their applications and no worry about, uh, about anything else that your application. So Cloud Foundry runs on top of uh, multiple clouds. Uh, 
and, uh, and you can use it, you can use it as a developer framework. Uh, provides application services, and uh, it's actually it's actually very convenient for for developers to to, to push push the applications, deploy applications. So you can scale it scale it out, scale it in, depending on the on your needs. Uh, not worrying about anything else. Okay. So just to see how easy is deploying an application in Cloud Foundry, this is a, a simple example uh, that we have uh, put together. So the first thing you need to do in Cloud Foundry and using the Cloud Foundry CLI is targeting your, your cloud. So you just say, okay, so my cloud is uh, running on that endpoint on, and uh, I'm using that space, that organization. Uh, once you do that, uh, you just push your app. So pushing your app, it means deploying your, your application. So you have your application code. You need to specify some, some configuration files so, so that Cloud Foundry knows what type of application you have and how to deploy it. But once you do that, you push your application, that goes to, to Cloud Foundry, and that gets deployed and that gets accessible from, from anywhere. So what, do, what we do on the third uh, command line here is creating a service. So let's say your application uses a, a MySQL or a Postgre or, or any other third-party service. So we, you, you create a service because Cloud Foundry uh, can have a, a marketplace of, uh, of services. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, Redis, uh, MySQL, Postgre. So that's, there, are a, there are a set of, uh, of uh, services out there. So you create the service, and then you bind that service to your application. So that's going to inject some uh, configuration into your, into your app in Cloud Foundry that you need to take. And uh, from, that, from that configuration that you take from, the, from Cloud Foundry, you configure your, your application to talk to, to, your, to your service. So, so right now, we have our applications on Cloud Foundry uh, connected to a third-party service. So let's say, let's say our, our application is becoming very popular, so we're going to scale it, scale it out. So it's very easy with, uh, with Cloud Foundry. You just, you just need to, to, to run the scale command, CF scale, the app, and the number of instances that you want to have for, for that application. You're gonna, you're gonna add, you can add a plus sign and the number if you want to increment by that number, your, your number of instances. Or, I mean, and that makes it very convenient for, for developers and for operators also. If you, if you want to uh, automate, uh, for example, the auto-scaling, uh, depending on the, on, the work, on the workload of your application, it's, uh, it's very convenient, it's very easy to, to set it up. So uh, the application that we just pushed, uh, it's on top of uh, this diagram. Uh, it's one of, the, one of the apps that we have on top. And below our, below our application, the, there is it's Cloud Foundry, and below Cloud Foundry, we have the infrastructure layer with, uh, with, a, with a selection of, uh, of cloud providers. And we are going to focus on, on OpenStack today. So as you can see, uh, Cloud Foundry uh, has uh, mul multiple components. It's fairly complicated, very complex, and uh, so that's why we are not going to go deep into Cloud Foundry today. But we are going to focus on, on one particular component, which is the one that uh, glues together uh, Cloud Foundry and OpenStack. And that, that component is Bosch, that you can see at the bottom of, uh, of the Cloud Foundry architecture. So Bosch is a tool chain uh, to, to, to release uh, software. You can, also, you can deploy software with that. Uh, you can manage the life cycle of, uh, of your, your application or your services. And it's very good, especially for large scale uh, systems like Cloud Foundry in our case. So Bosch is gonna, is be, the one, is gonna be the one deploying and managing your, our Cloud Foundry uh, uh, environment, okay? So, but apart from Cloud Foundry, it can also deploy other, other services like uh, Hadoop, MySQL. Uh, I mean, there, there's a bunch of uh, other services that uh, Bosch can deploy. And as I said, it, it works on uh, multiple uh, IaaS providers, uh, but uh, we are going to focus today on, on, on OpenStack. So uh, here we can see three main components. Uh, we see on the, on the left-hand side, we see the Bosch CLI, which is used by, the, by an operator. So the operator uses the Bosch CLI that connects to, a, to the Bosch instance. So that Bosch instance uh, has, have, has a layer, the CPI, which uh, stands for cloud, uh, cloud Provider Interface. And that is the one uh, managing all the infrastructure depending on, uh, depending on the, the, what is the cloud provider that you are using, OpenStack, AWS, uh, Google, and so on. Uh, so 
when the operator wants to deploy something on using Bosch, so he's going to use the CLI that's going to go to the Bosch instance, and Bosch is going to uh, create and launch uh, as many VMs as we have specified, and the, uh, those VMs are going to have uh, the Bosch agent inside, which is the, which is which is the one that is going to be in charge of uh, of reporting and uh, and reporting to the Bosch instance, so that we can uh, manage, uh, and we can check the health of the system, we can, we can scale it up, scale it down, uh, and, and run some commands on there. Uh, so, so those VMs that you see in yellow uh, is where Cloud Foundry is gonna be, is gonna be deployed, and the size of uh, the Cloud Foundry, the Cloud Foundry cluster is gonna determine the number of applications that we can, that we can run. And uh, so we can push and and, uh, and a bunch of other parameters. Right? So how do we how we, we how we deploy uh, with uh, with Bosch? So in order in order for us to deploy with Bosch, we need to create a, a manifest. So that manifest uh, it's gonna it's gonna tell Bosch what is the roadmap to deploy that service. Okay? It's, it's gonna be it's gonna, it's a YAML file like, like you have seen on. And so many other services and applications, uh, that, but, but it's going to be uh, quite extensive uh, with, uh, with with all the information that Bosch needs to deploy uh, Cloud Foundry. So that includes the number of VMs that it's going to use, the network, uh, the the volumes, the flavors of the of the instances, and uh, so many and, and so many things that uh, that uh, that Bosch needs to to deploy it. So so with that, Bosch is going to take that, and it's going to Create all these VMs, and it's going to orchestrate the deployment, and it's going to also not only that, but also manage the lifecycle of, uh, of the of the instances. So, in case there is a new version of Cloud Foundry, uh, Bosch is going to be the one upgrading the, your Cloud Foundry cluster. Yeah. So, how how we how we deploy Cloud Foundry on top of OpenStack? So, as I said, uh, we do it with the manifest, but before that, uh, we need to follow some steps. So, the first step. Is to check that, you, that we have uh, all the requirements in our environment in, in our OpenStack. So there is a checklist for for the for all the requirements that we need for Cloud Foundry. So for example, we need to create some particular uh, security groups, some flavors. Uh, we have to check that we have a DNS uh, service configured correctly. Uh, we need to check that we have uh, networks. Uh, we can create network. We can create volumes. We can create instances. Uh, so there is a, there is a checklist, uh, an extensive che checklist that we have to, to make before uh, applying the, the manifest, so so that our environment is uh, is healthy and ready to, to run Cloud Foundry. So when we have that ready, we go to the next step, uh, which is deploying Bosch, the Bosch instance. So as we saw on the other diagram, uh, that Bosch instance is going to be a VM in uh, in OpenStack that is going to orchestrate and and deploy. All the different VMs and instances for res and resources for Cloud Foundry. So we do that with Bosch as well. So we create another manifest, deployment manifest for the Bosch instance, right? So when we have that, uh, we have the Bosch instance ready. We can move to the third and final step, which is deploying Cloud Foundry, and we create the manifest that, that we that we said before. And when we have that ready, uh, everything configured there, we can just run the command Bosch deploy, and that's going to trigger the deployment uh, that, that the Bosch instance is going gonna, is gonna to perform. Right. So, so with that, I'm going hand to hand it over to, to Magdi, which is, which, uh, who is going to show us a, a cool demo of uh, how this uh, manifest looks like and how, how to deploy some services with, uh, with Bosch. Thank you, Adrian. Hello, everyone. Uh, before we start, uh, how many of you used the uh, Bosch command before? Okay, a few people here. Okay, we have more here. Uh, okay, so how many of you have a few hours, like two or three hours, so we can do live, live deployment? So uh, I, think, I think we don't have a lot of time. So for our demo, um, we're going to connect to uh, Live Cloud Foundry, in a sense that it's running in our uh, Neutrino rack. You can, it's identical to the one we have here in our uh, booth, but it's, I'm going to connect to our uh, data center. So would you like, first of all, would you like it a live demo or would you like it recorded? Let's, let's go with the live, right, see. But if the connection drop, we can switch the video. 
Okay, let's see another thing here. I'm not showing anything, but maybe mm. you have to, to move it to it there. I don't yeah. know if I can move it here. Windows P. And you? Double click. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Big point enough. Can you see in the back? <laughs> okay. So the first thing, you know, as if as you know, I see a lot of people here use Bosch before. Uh, when you when you deploy Cloud Foundry, you have multiple deployment files. So one of the famous commands we can run with Bosch is we type Bosch deployment. And it will return to us a list of all the deployments. So we have Cloud Foundry deployment, and we have the Bmatrix and Redis deploy it. And under the Cloud Foundry deployment, it, it shows us all the different VM or uh, the in instance that's running there. So if we need to have uh, more detail about, okay, so uh, this is the second column shows uh, the component. So if we need to see how many Bosch VMs running there, we can just type Bosch VM. And now we're going to get very detailed information about each VM running and as you see, there is a lot of VMs running there. So if you see, I, I think it's, it's hard to see, but I'm trying to make it large enough for everyone, but it's a few figure up a little bit, maybe here. So this is our uh, Cloud Foundry and all the VM running there. You can see the name of the VM here the mouse, then the IP to connect and the status running, you know, the zone and the type of the VM. Um, another command we can run is, say, I don't need to see all this. I just need to focus on the, say, the VM, uh, the, the radius, how many VM running there, if I need just to get there. So I can set my deployment New laptops, sorry. And I'm trying to to go to the location of the deployment. So you run Bosch deployment, then you point it to a specific YAML file deployment manifest. Right, and the name is I think P. So this, I'm pointing to this one. So if I write push in instance, I should get the list of the radius in instance only. So this is a cool way to just get the instance. So if you know you have, you're running push and you're running into problem with radius alone, and instead of trying to scroll up and down for all the VMs that are running, you can just pointing to the instance itself. Um, there is, there is sometime one of my favorite command is, for you guys, I'm sure it's similar, cloud check. Now, this is, this is our savior. The, the first thing we try to do when we start running into problem with Bosch or our instant, we seeing something is not working correct, we just say, okay, let's check my cloud. So, uh, Bosch cloud check or CCK, it will give us a list. It will go, Bosch will go and start scanning the database and try to reach out for all the VMs and try to make sure that each VMs, the agent is responding back. And after it responds back, make sure all the VM is good. good. It second step, it go and start to check the persistent task. So I'm happy, there's no problem found. I'm, I'm very happy. So, so for, for for the people who doesn't use Bosch and didn't use Cloud Foundry before, and they are not familiar with the manifest, how it look like, let's let's try to uh, cat one of them. Hmm. 
and that's the type of the first one. So this is our clan foundry manifest, and let's see how how big it is. Oh my God! Did you see how? Usually, when you edit it, it's, it's over 50,000 line of code or something like that. So, and also depend on your in your deployment. Are you deploying in high availability or are you just deploying a small one? And and uh, so, it, so this is our just demonstration for what you can do with Bosch to inspect your uh, Cloud Foundry. So go back here. So what's next? Okay, so I don't think any one of us would like to sit and try to type this manifest manually or try to, so there is some tools out there you can do it. But uh, Bivital actually came up with uh, one, of, one of their tools is, is uh, the Ops Manager. The Ops Manager is like a website that where you can go and upload your package there. You can use it to create the manifest there and the doesn't take much, it just gives you some main parameter that depends on your environment, and it will go and create a manifest for you, and it will, will trigger Bosch to deploy the Cloud Foundry for you. So this, let's see, um, I think. So if this is our Ops Manager, and as you see, it just you come to the dashboard. When you install it first, first time you install the, the Ops Manager, it comes by default with, with this one. So uh, the Ops Manager, that's, uh, the Bosch, that's where Bosch Innocent will be deployed. And if we try to look into the setting here, take, back, take us back to what Adrian was saying, that when you deploy Bosch Innocent, when, in order to deploy OpenStack on top of Cloud Foundry, you need to know, make sure that your innocent is healthy, you have all the prerequisites, and here you start collecting the prerequisites. You, you need your uh, authentication URL, you need uh, tenant information, you need uh, SSH key, and the SSL certification. Then it take you, start taking you another step. Okay, now we're going to talk about the director itself, and we give inf more information. And you know you need, of course, for, for people who deploy it, you know, deploy it Cloud Foundry before we need SS3 SS3 endpoint for the blob storage, so we can compile our packages and the build back and push it there. Um, you can create network. So as we said, we need we need information about the infrastructure. We need the information you collect about the network. That's who, who you plug the information here. Like, okay, here is my OpenStack network. This is the ID, this is what is the IP address I'm going to use, and the DNS and the gateway. So it is a user interface that's easy for us to plug information without having to deal with uh, creating the manifest manually. And once we finish, all what we do is just go here and hit apply changes. Just hitting it, it will create it will create the ops director for us, and I'm ready to deploy my Cloud Foundry after this. How to do it is using importing product. I can import the Pivotal component, like a Pivotal Elastic Runtime, the Pivotal Matrix, now they call it GMX Bridge, and this three component is this, the three main component for Cloud Foundry. After this, I can go and add more components. But in order, the minimum configuration we need to go is we have this three component. So in Elastic Runtime, uh, you enter some inf main information like, okay, this is, this is where my, my domain will run. So we enter a space name for, for the system and for the app. You also, we need to configure your, um, high availability, so are you going to use external load balancer or are you going to use just internal load balance? Or you can use uh, uh, the OpenStack, the high availability proxy here. So, and you need, you can import your own certification or you can have auto self-signed certification here. 
Another point here is we can lock is uh, actually the database. With Pivotal Cloud Foundry, you can use external database or you can use their internal database, and it's highly recommended to use it always in, in high availability mode. Also, we need the blob storage. Here we can give more information that what we need, what we need. This stuff actually is documented very well in Pivotal Cloud Foundry documentation. If you go to Pivotal Docs, it's actually documented with the screenshot. It's actually one um, with the screenshot, so it's really easy to, to follow. Um, another area I need to highlight here is the errand. That's where after you finish the deployment, Pivotal try to run a smoke test to make sure that the Elastic Runtime is running correct and balanced, and it push for you App Manager. So the Apps Manager, it's, it's a user interface. You can see your app there. You can manage your organization and space, or you can use a Cloud Foundry CLI. Again, um, say you have everything imported and deployed. So actually, when you click Apply Changes, it creates logs, and it keeps track of the logs. So let's just look for some of the logs here that you know, after we deploy it and added it stuff, so you can see it, it look for uh, packages to make sure the package is compiled and it already exists because, it, as you see, it's already compiled and we have stem cells here and, you know, it's, it's very detailed. I always like uh, the end to see that it's actually exit zero, where is the mouse? Sorry, it's a, a new laptop for me. Anyway. I think we're gonna move forward. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so let's uh, go back. All right. So, as we see that we are able to deploy Cloud Foundry in three steps, and you have OpenStack, you can get Pivotal, you, import, you install it and just create the manifest and have uh, Cloud Foundry on top. So, very easy. But is it really easy? Uh, I'm not sure what you will think, but you know, we, we actually uh, deploying Cloud Foundry in our uh, OpenStack environment in production, and sometimes we run into some challenges. I don't want to say it's an issue because it's always a challenge and you know, with the right talent you can, you can fix it. So here I'm just going through some of the example that we, we, we saw when we were running. So one of them is, uh, okay, you have your deployment, you deploy your cloud, cloud foundry and after you install it, it try to run the errand to make sure that the elastic runtime is actually running and stable and suddenly you cannot reach to your endpoint. So in this case, we found like it's some network issue. Make sure you are, there's no firewall issue that blocking you. Make sure you're not behind proxy. One of recommendation to set up floating IB for each VM. So maybe you can bypass this issue. And this is one of my favorite. <laughs> so uh, uh, how many of you tried to stop the Cloud Foundry before? You know, just be easy, just run bash stop and stop the whole cloud. It's easy to, done, to be done. There's a challenge always once you do this, you now you run to try start bash start, and guess what? I got this error. So, so you, have, you have the console here, cluster, and it's not able to start. You have the ATCD, it's not able to start. So, so what's, what's going on here? They are in cluster mode, they are not able to start. So it's uh, one of the issue, and I have the URL here, how to restart the cluster together. You SSH to HVM. There is a job, there's a command there called uh, mount job. You run mount job and you just type on job stop the console agent or the ATCD agent. After this, you, there is a folder for, uh, for the console data. You remove this folder, you save, 
you exit, you push, push deployment again, and the console should start. So I have, we have the URL for uh, the workaround. Okay, uh, this was an interesting one too. Okay, so after uh, I shut down the Cloud Foundry, I'm trying to restart again, and during the startup, suddenly I is posturing me uh, error, I cannot connect to this VM, or error creating the VM. So there's multiple area here you can check, because this now is related, you know, if you cannot create the VM, so what's happening when in my, uh, uh, my hypervisor or my cloud? So we go to open stack and I start checking. All right, first of all, can I create a VM and it's just like a bash problem, but I can create it in my own? So if you are able to create it, okay. Uh, next step, what kind of hypervisor bash hitting? Maybe there's a problem in the hypervisor itself. Um, maybe I take it out of the loop and try again and see what will happen. Or maybe I'm able to create the VM, but when I try to attach to the presence disk, I can't attach the volume. So one of the steps here is, in our case, for example, it was issue with the volume, and volume is giving us hard time, so we can log into MySQL for uh, Cinder MySQL database, and you can update the status of uh, the volume there and try to detach it from any other instance. So, some troubleshooting. <laughs> uh, this is with issue run two when we run uh, Cloud Foundry 1.6 or uh, BCF 1.6. Uh, is any time I'm trying to add a new tile, I try to upload a new package there, I get error and I have to go back to the Ops Manager and post the certification again. And this issue is fixed in 1.7. So if anyone try to use older version, try to stay with Bivital also, always in the most recent version. Uh, okay, this one is, uh, was interesting too. So this is also documented in, in, in Bivital Cloud Foundry website that it's non issue that if you shut down the Cloud Foundry and try to start it, always you have a problem starting MySQL and as a cluster mode. And the trick here is you find some one of them is started and the rest is failing, one uh, or two starting and one failing. So try to get all of them in the failing mode and just run after this, bash run, uh, bash run errand startup. So the, the last command down there and it will actually fix a cluster for you. We saw this one twice, uh, just uh, picked wrong, wrong size for the ops manager. And um, as you add more tiles and try to push more deployment, we're just running out of memory there and we are no longer able to access the UI. So if you try to access the UI and getting error you cannot access, so you can go back, check what is the memory utilization in this VM and try to increase it or you can check the ACL rules. So this is with just some of the few issues we, we saw with, uh, with Cloud Foundry and OpenStack. So, so what is our recommendation for you guys? So, so far, OpenStack, Cloud Foundry, good or bad to each other? So, so, yeah, it's, it's not perfect yet. <laughs> so, so one of the challenge you know, if you try to build your own OpenStack. So uh, myself, I have my a big server and I download some of the OpenStack and use orchestrator and just deploy it all inside some VMs. That's, that's good for me to play in my server, but if I'm talking about a company enterprise and try to go for full production, can I just use the same method? or it's now becoming more complicated process. So I need to find the right talent, and hunting for the right talent these days is not easy job. I need to assemble the correct hardware that I make sure that all of it will work actually together. And it's not only about building the OpenStack. The problem is maintaining after you open. And this is where the catch usually is. So, we have some real life example here that we have a media company. We don't have to mention the name, but uh, they, this is a true story. 
They started in 2013 and they built their own OpenStack. They started having problems during the upgrades. They hired a lot of consulting and so far they still stuck in uh, Ice House. One of the other uh, real-time story is, is uh, this credit agency. They start kicking the project to a year ago and hired expert and so far they're still in developing mode. Prototyping actually, so. So in order to save time, make sure you are able to have uh, a good cloud and you're able to maintain it. We recommend for you VX, VX rack nutrient system. Uh, with VX rack with new system, we have the hardware. You can deploy OpenStack with one click. Just add Surface and you have OpenStack deployed for you. And you can using the native hybrid cloud, which is uh, Pivotal Cloud Foundry, to, to run your Cloud Foundry on top of OpenStack. And you're ready to go and develop application very quick, very easy, after you got the system. I encourage every one of you guys to check our booth. At A1, we have actually the VX racks sitting there, and we can give you a demo, and you can show you under, you can see the hardware. It's not a Christmas tree. It's actually the real deal. So I would encourage you to, to visit us. Uh, this, this is some use case why we talk about Neutrino. It's a turnkey solution. It's considered cloud, it's, it's like the iPhone, but for the cloud native application, you can deploy multiple services there, and you will get um, enterprise support, Dell MEC support with the hardware. And here's some of the use cases. It's DevOps friendly. You can deploy applications there, itself here, and Hadoop ends up planning. So if you're planning to have Hadoop in your system, so you get VX Rack to give you OpenStack, Cloud Foundry, and Hadoop. So conclusion. So conclusion, we see OpenStack, Cloud Foundry, actually, they are almost perfect for each other. It's the two biggest open source project we have in, open, in two biggest open, uh, open source community. But like any real life relationship, even the perfect marriage has problem and sometimes people need just try to understand each other. So in order to try to understand each other, you need to have the, the, the your cloud operator need to have the correct uh, experience. And the correct experience you can gain it by, you know, training, try and error, <laughs> deploying, and sometime also this experience dependent, are you getting a turnkey solution or are you getting just building in your own? And sometime, you know, what kind of cloud version on vendor you are, you are using. So, so uh, with that, I hope not any question. So. No, no, no. It's a, so, so Bosch, Bosch work with um, uh, work with VM, VMware. It, 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 it's a okay. So, so the question we have is is Bosch CCK is just command for OpenStack only, and the answer no. That's it's uh, it, it's one of the Bosch command and the Bosch compatible with VMware, AWS, and OpenStack. So it, depend, it doesn't matter what is the IIS layer, it can actually run for, once you deploy it, it can run in any, in any one. So you can use it in all of them. Any other question? Raffle? <laughs> okay. Pick one. Right. Let's see who's the winner. So, the winner is uh, two, seven, nine. Nobody? Oh, so we have a winner here. Aaron. Awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, thank you guys for coming. Okay.